just have um, a cozy hour together. Hmm. Nothing polished is planned. It's just a holding space. Let's see what's alive. Maybe you have questions. Maybe you don't. Let's just let's just see what will happen. Um, <clears throat> but maybe just before we begin, the intention for the journey. I have worked in the field of of sustainability my entire life. Started as a kid and. Um, started to move in a regenerative direction about a decade ago. And uh, and in the beginning, it was an incredibly lonely landscape to navigate. Um, and I have helped companies and organizations and leaders transition to regeneration um, for especially the past seven, eight years. Five years ago, my colleague Giles Hutchins and I wrote the book Regenerative Leadership Together was published almost five years ago at a time where no publisher wanted to publish it. It was so, too much a niche or it was too complex. It was all kinds of things we were told. Um, but very quickly, the book became an international bestseller and has been translated now to soon eight languages. So there was something there. There was an interest, a curiosity, a resonance. Um, and... Four years ago, I started to host shorter courses and online journeys. Um, but three years ago, I really wanted to hold space for a longer journey so we could get to know each other. People could get to know each other within the community and and, and therefore started the, the year-long regenerative leadership journey where I was lucky to meet many amazing people that I now work with um, or are working with each other. Many people have started partnerships and companies together, but I was also lucky to meet Emily, who was on the on the first uh, on the first journey. Emily is an amazing space holder, a self-leadership coach. Um, you can check her work out on on her company website called Wish Tree. And um, and and her and I held the space together last year for the 2023 journey. Um, which was a quite good combination of my experience in sustainability transformation, regenerative leadership, organizational development. Um, and of course, I have also worked one-to-one -one with executives, but Emily's steep understanding of, of coaching and self-leadership has really proven to be a great match. Emily is the community nurturer, and, and we see a nurturer as one who is helping to nourish the field, helping me sense and respond into into the into the community and, and helping me hold space for for the cohort. Um, so the journey is, is 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 a deep dive into all kinds of elements uh, that I believe is part of the regenerative leadership paradigm. Um, and I don't know if 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 there's an interest in me showing a few slides, but I can also just share very briefly that the the journey is designed as a cyclical wheel. So we begin the first season deep in the winter where we are nourishing the soil, nourishing the foundation for transformation, spending time in the energy of wintering, regardless of where we are on the planet, because this is a very global uh, community. So we have people from New Zealand, Singapore, Australia, Brazil, Argentina, um, South Africa, etc., joining as well, and they are not deep into their winter in, in terms of, of seasons as we are here in Northern Europe, but there, it's still an important foundation when we embark on a new journey. How do we dare start by laying the foundation um, that feels nourishing where we are spending time nourishing our soil and understanding the importance of soil in ecosystems, understanding our role as great ancestors in the greater web of, web of life, but also this is also the season where we are diving deep into understanding the root cause of the friction we see in our societies, understanding the story of separation. So that is the winter chapter. And then we move into the spring chapter, which is about understanding the wisdom and logic of, of life, nature's wisdom, tapping into this 3.8 billion years of research, research and development that we can lend 
a humbly wisdom from and how we are redesigning societies, organizations, business models, etc. So we're spending time in the energy of seasons, understanding new regenerative frameworks, business practices, business models, um, and, and, and are also understanding our role as leaders are not one who are managing or dictating machines. We are facilitating ecosystems. We are gardeners. So we need to understand how do we map our own organizational ecosystem and that of our organizations and their interdependence with everything um, around them. So that is the energy of spring. And then the journey moves into uh, an energy of summer where we are deeply prioritizing what we call wisdom seat sessions, which is all about um, sharing our challenge, getting the feedback from the collective in terms of understanding. Um, how can I move my project organization uh, leadership in a regenerative di direction? So we are learning from each other, exploring and diving deep together. Um, uh, and then we move into a phase of, of, of integration. And meanwhile, we have um, in 2024, we have 10 really amazing guest regenerative pioneers. You can see those on the website that are um, that are lending their wisdom and inspiration. Um, an important point uh, for me is that I don't want to 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 be a guru that is sharing my wisdom. I'm I'm much more of a space holder, and I find excitement in lending wisdom from from many different fields and many different uh, people in the regenerative um, in the regenerative field. So we will invite them into our community and hear their perspectives, um, and spend some quality time with them as well as, um, as hearing from some of the pioneering companies and organizations. This year, it is Houdini that I've worked with and Vivo Barefoot that I've worked with as well that will come and give a guest session. Um, there are much more that I could that I could share, but but we did that in the taster session as well that we recorded. So for those of you that want more of the kind of what are the building blocks of this journey, um, I would advise looking at that, but also our website has a lot of, of information. So I will stop there and, and, and let's see what kind of questions you have. Or if you don't have any questions to the journey, maybe we could just have an interesting sharing around regenerative leadership. Let's see what, what happens. So any of you that have any questions, Hello. Hi, I have a question. Hi, Anna. <laughs> Hi, nice to meet you. Um, um, I'm curious about many things, but my question was more of the practical, on the practical side. Um, what, is there like an estimation about sort of time spent on the course throughout the seasons mm -hmm. or yeah, to get yes. an idea of... Um, yeah, like practical time investment. <laughs> yes, I understand. And we get that question a lot, of course. And I mean, one question is it depends. I mean, it's always a return on investment. What you put it put in often equals what you the return that you get. But there are roughly two sessions, two live sessions um per month. Mm -hmm. So one with Emily and I and one with a guest. Um, the first guest joins us in March because we want to spend some time January and February just kind of building community and letting you settle in to the journey um, because the journey comes in with a combination of our live sessions and then the pre-recorded modules. There are six pre-recorded modules and they are sort of like um, the homework, if you could say that, for the first six months. So you will really, really benefit from going through these pre-recorded modules. The first module is, is, is about understanding what is regenerative leadership? 
what in what ways is it different from sustainability and why do we need it why do we need this regenerative approach the second pre-recorded module is about the story of separation which is what we will start to unpack and unfold in march and you will really benefit from actually having having been through the the, the pre-recorded module which is about an hour roughly each pre-recorded module is an hour and there's a workbook as well that you that you can use to help you integrate the learnings. It's not a requirement. Um, so, and then in March, we start to have the first guest session, which is also two hours. So um, two sessions per month with mm -hmm. Emily and I, uh, or a guest speaker, mm -hmm. um, and then six pre-recorded modules um, so they will take up the first six months of, of the journey um, and not so much the second part. Um, the second part of the journey, there will be a bit more guest speakers. And that's also where we um, start a process of opening up for a community-led session, which is quite an interesting, um, vibrant season of the journey. Because uh, from October, November, December, members of the community are offering their wisdom. So we have had... Um, over the years, over 30 sessions about all kinds of things, varying mm. a lot, right, Emily? Um, everything mm. from <clears throat> regenerative family constellations mm. to hardcore business model um, mm. discussions to um, how AI. Do I, AI, how do I start a conversation within my organization? All kinds of things. Mm. But the short answer is to two hour sessions a month, the six pre-recorded modules. And then you have the opportunity of joining a home circle, which is your private study group that many people really benefit from because this is your smaller intimate um, sharing circle. Hmm. And you self-organize how often you want to meet. Um, some people from the 22 journey still meet um, every week. Others, um, only manage to meet maybe five times throughout the year. Mm -hmm. So it that depends. But that's again, it's up to you. It's it's an investment that you make, but it's an opportunity that that we offer. So we we put you in circles, we introduce you, and then it's up to you to, to self-organize how often you you come together. Mm. Is that a sufficient answer answer for yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. Can, can, well, can I see I was looking for thank you. <clears throat> Can I jump in as well and say a few words? Because, of course, I was a participant on this journey, um, which means that I, I, I know exactly how you're feeling right now and thinking, how am I going to kind of fit this into my life? Um, I was really sitting down just before we came on and thinking about this. And I would say that if you could set aside two hours a week for this space, it's going to be incredibly nourishing for you. What we want to do is to integrate uh, the whole notion of being, living, doing regenerative leadership into our lives. So if we have a habit to set aside a couple of hours a week for this, this work, this practice, um, showing up to Laura's pre-recorded modules, um, and not see it as now I'm doing my life and now I'm doing regenerative leadership. Does that make sense? Mm. That's going to really help to mm. massage the content, the activations um, into our lives. And we're going to get so much more out of it. This is an incredibly rich journey. It is so full of vibrant life affirming content and opportunities for connection and growth and part of why I'm here supporting our community is that I support you to navigate all of this so every week you have almost a little newsletter about what's going on this week in the academy so what we do is we point you to exactly the resources that will be beneficial for you to sit with. We remind you of the upcoming sessions. We give you tips and suggestions for what you could sit with in your home circle. 
if being part of a home circle feels way too much and way too overwhelming, you don't have to. It might be that you connect with somebody in a breakout session on a live session and think, wow, I would love to speak more with this person. Maybe the two of us can kind of hang out and talk about the content now and again. Maybe that's what you choose, right? But we offer you on a weekly basis suggestions for the resources to look at, uh, the questions and 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 uh, prompts to sit with um, so that you can navigate all of this wonderful buffet <laughs> um, of, of um, opportunities to immerse yourself. Um, and, and you can always contact me. I'm available in our community forum. You can always say, what should I be? I, I've got deadlines at work, you know, um, lots going on at home. Uh, I'm feeling a little bit frazzled. Uh, what should I do? Right? Because what we want you to do is we want you to stay on the path, right? To stay in the path, because that is an essential part of regenerative leadership is, you know, the world outside, we're going to start noticing perhaps more of the chaos, perhaps more of the story of separation, right? And that's going to kind of nudge us. It's going to, it's going to want us to kind of get pulled out off the path. And so what we're doing is stay on the path, stay on the path, stay on the path. So you can always reach out to me. I'm in the community forum and, you know, we can have a chat about what's the one thing that you can focus on next, if that is what you are going to feel. And some of us do mm. because we're navigating some messy and turbulent times. Yeah. Um, I think part of this as well is I'm a self-leadership coach and that's also part of why I'm here. And that's what Laura spoke about as well is, is kind of tuning into that. I, I'm here as well to support you in nurturing yourself because when you're nurtured, you can then become that gardener and you can nurture the ecosystems in your life. But part of navigating the journey and choosing where to focus is also part of that tuning into your self-leadership and saying, this is what I'm drawn to right now. This is where my curiosity is drawing me right now. And that's a life affirming energy. And that's also part of regenerative leadership. It's like, go where you feel the joy, the pull, the call to go as well in the content. But if you set aside, coming back to the hours, if you set aside two hours a week to kind of show up with the content, I think it's gonna be really nurturing and nourishing for you. We're never done with Laura's modules. Like I still go back and listen to them. So we, we can't think that just because we've um, listened to a module once, we've ticked the box, we've done the homework and mm -hmm. it's done and dusted, right? Um, the content is very profound and activating. It's like, it's tapping us, right? activating us in mind and heart and body um and so we're gonna we're gonna keep coming back to them so that's an important and thing I think to, something, to remember as well something interesting is that um that the 22 and 23 cohort they still have access to um to the modules yes. and and are forming their own little um, mini circles to actually go back to the content um yes. so and and some people sometimes they fall out of the journey a couple of months and they re-enter their journey and that's um exactly where you can reach out to to Emily because sometimes we have other things going on in our yes. life and that's perfectly yes. okay as well um mm -hmm. and we will do our best to to pull you back in um and not feel the overwhelm and and trust that that what is what is there for you is what is what you need um, another thing that I wanted to mention is that because we have been doing these journeys for a couple of years now, they're forming some really rich local groups and topic-based groups. So we have groups on regenerative um, architecture, coaching, organizational development, but we also have some really rich local-based groups, a rich North American one, Brazil, Spanish, a French group, um, Dutch group, 
a Danish group. And this year we will do something new, which is um, for the North American one, for uh, Australian, New Zealand, or Asia Pacific, um, Denmark, French speaking community, Spanish speaking community, I may have forgotten some. Um, journey members from previous years will hold space for extra sessions in their mother tongue or for their region to apply the content we go through into their region because it's a, it's a big global community so how can we uh, tune in and 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 meet with people in our region or people that speak um, our language but thank you so so much, Emily, and 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 it's incredibly valuable because you have actually been journeying through the whole journey before you and I started to get working together a year ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're in for such a treat if you decide to jump in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. Sounds uh, amazing. <laughs> Another thing that will happen this year that we 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 started we we had a pilot one last year where we had a physical gathering that was I was um part of the organizing team but didn't really play a big role it was the community that did the organizing and I've written a blog about that um I can share that in the chat in a second if you're interested but many more of these self-organized physical gatherings will 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 emerge this year. Um, one being planned in Australia, North America. The Danish one comes up the first weekend of April. Uh, a UK one, one in France, one in Spain. Um, so that's another thing that is part of this experience that you become part of a year-long journey but you're also part of a community of the cohorts from the previous years that are already working together on how can we meet physically etc um yeah but that's not something that emily and i are involved in in terms of planning it's not something we've put on the website it's um it's part of this self-organizing community constellation Emily, you want to say something? I just wanted to speak to the fact that, um, that what you just said there about the self-organizing nature of the community that, that we step into when we say yes to this journey. This is an incredible opportunity to, to forge incredible new connections, partnerships with people from across the globe. It's an incredible opportunity to try out and test new ways, new offerings, um, bringing people together and holding space in new ways for experimentation, um, creativity, and having people show up with care, with no judgment, with just a, a, a space where we can show up and be who we be and create from that place inside of us. And of course, we begin that process in, in, in the autumn. And it's the energy of, of, of those uh, community-led sessions that then often spark, you know, kind of real in-person gatherings and all kinds of other business partnerships and all kinds of wonderful things that have just come out of the community already so i think it's really important to kind of highlight the mm -hmm. self-organizing aspect and how laura you mentioned a couple of times we're space holders so it's not a, a kind of top down kind of container it's a we're all here together mm -hmm learning from each other, learning with each other, learning about each other, learning about life and how we can realign with life and 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 and, and co-create together. And I think that's really special. <clears throat> Just wanted to speak to that. Victoria? Um I just wondered if the sessions um into the live sessions or the I can audio. barely hear you, Victoria. Sorry, I think my audio is a bit dodgy. Can you hear me now? 
Yes. Um, just thinking about the, the sessions, the pre-recorded and the live sessions, and I wondered, um, is there sort of, of a workshopping element to them, or is it more kind of presentations? Because obviously we're, we're all kind of, we have a lot of information in our lives, and uh, my capacity for more information feels like it's pretty full. But to kind of work through information and discuss and kind of, um, yeah, do, do the kind of reflection and the workshopping of that information is really what I'm more looking for. Yeah. How, how you structure that yes um, and and that depends on the on the session um, but what we value in the live session is the learning and sharing together so there's always an element of smaller breakouts um, often we break out twice during a session um, there's an element of um, meditation just to ground the space there's an element of we try to kind of mix it up so it's not the same kind of flow that happens um, in in every session but we deeply value that that this is a journey where we also roll up the sleeves but for example a module like um, the story of separation that comes up in March there will be um, an, a presentation element that will probably be around 45 minutes because it's it's deeply important for me that we are all on the same page in terms of understanding the root cause and why we need a regenerative approach. Uh, whereas for the ecosystem facilitation module that comes up in May, it's much more about sharing our ecosystem maps that we have done as homework before the session, sharing that with together in smaller communities, coming back, sharing with the bigger group, sharing out again in smaller groups. So it, it depends. Um, it depends on what the topic is. Sometimes uh, it's it's definitely the story of separation piece that has um to go by the previous years but but i i never like to do the same thing twice so this journey this year will be different from previous years but there will be some um live session where uh, where there is a presentation element and others where it's more about um workshop formats learning together sharing together giving feedback to each other etc does that make sense? Yes, great. Thank you. Thank you. And we weave in creative elements. Um, that's also partly why I'm here. Uh, we, I bring, you know, movement and music. Um, you know, there's opportunity to draw and doodle if that's your thing. Um, but we try to bring the content into the body and remind ourselves that the body is 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 coming with us on this journey. This isn't a mind based learning journey. There has to be some information there that we have to take in so that we can start to shift the way we see and do and be. And I think, especially in the early part of the journey, when everybody's settling into the journey, right? Some are joining a bit later, some are, you know, um, opening the modules a bit later than others. And there's a bit of kind of this energy, right? And I, I think, you know, you shared about the story of separation. It's such a, a pillar piece of, or trunk, tree trunk piece <laughs> of this journey that that presentation has to be there to make sure that, that we bring the kind of coherence of that settling into the space. But we're also sensing and responding to the community at, every, at, at any given point of the journey. And it might be that we're noticing from the conversations that people are having in chats or in the community forum, that there are certain pieces that people have certain questions about. And then Laura will say, okay, well, maybe we need 20 minutes or 15 minutes to talk about this piece because it seems like people are having questions about it. And then there will be a presentation piece. And then another session, there'll be no presentation whatsoever. So we're sensing and responding to what's going on. Yes, exactly. And part of the reason that I wanted to record the kind of key pillars on video was that we spent the time we actually had together sharing and talking and learning from each other um yeah so that was part of the reason that there's these six pre-recorded modules
that you can watch in your own time. Any other questions? I, 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 may I speak? Yes. And Anna, you can go after. Okay, cool. Thank you. Uh, I'm not sure if this is the place for this question, but I was wondering about the scholarships. If I didn't have any answer on that, if that, because I, I have to understand it was not given it to me. Is that right? Um, we have actually decided to do two, two batches of scholarships. So there was the first batch, they were notified before the Christmas break. And the second one, I think they will be notified um, before the end of this week. Right, Emily? Okay. Absolutely. So we've had so many wonderful applications. And so part of my job is to go through all of the scholarships and we sit with them. And if you haven't had a response, like you will have a response um, either way. So you, the aim is really for us to send you something tomorrow, if I can work through all of them today, um, but otherwise in a couple of days time. Um, but we will let you know, um, and and yes, um, you can then decide if if you're um, if you're not successful, then there are other options to join. Yeah, because the I mean the tomorrow is the last day to join. Is that correct? So yes, yeah. but for yes. all all for all who have applied to scholarship, when yes. we notify you of either way, if mm -hmm. if you haven't received a scholarship, we will still let you in if you still want to join in another kind of arrangement so it's, 100% so don't worry about the that um, okay it sounds great for me well thank you very much thank you <laughs> when did you send your application Flitter? so the first one I sent it in September but mm -hmm. yesterday I applied again <laughs> okay <laughs> I, I, I'm really interested in being able to do it but I'm sorry if I just maybe I duplicate the work so I don't know. <laughs> it's all good. Thank you so much. Thank and you for your interest. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you, Anna, for your question and Emily and Laura for your answers because my questions are, I think, 90% answered already. Um, they were mostly referring to how I can integrate um, this journey into my messy life, as you <laughs> said, Emily. Um, and the only question that remains is um, the timing, because you said it's a global community. And I was wondering at what time of the day, like European time, Mm -hmm. and the integration sessions and the live sessions, community sessions and so on and so forth um, are going to happen because I have a child. So in the evening, I'm mostly... Yeah. Um... So last, the first year, we only had one time slot, but that was um, a bit inconvenient for those that were not in the European time zone. So this year um, and last year, we have two time slots per live session, not for the guest speakers. That's the time zone that fits their time zone. Um, but we record all sessions. So you, if if it's a, if the guest speaker joins at a time that's not convenient with your time zone, watch the recording afterwards. But the live session um, where we really want to make it as accessible to as many as possible, because that's really where we integrate and learn from each other and meet interesting people we have two time slots. So the first time slot is from 9 to 11 CET, European time, um, or plus one. So that's 9 to 11, that's the, the European morning. And then we have a European afternoon from three to five CET. So that should make it possible from people both Asia Pacific, but, but also on the West Coast, if they get up early in the morning in West Coast US and, um, and, and Ecuador, Peru, etc. So, so I hope that answered the question. Yes, a hundred percent. Thank you. Anything else? Um, I have an, another one as well. Um, um, 
I'm curious, how, how many people are you expecting this year? I think we will be around um, 200. Uh, the two previous years, we have been around 300. I think it will be a little less this year, but but we don't know. I mean, um, mm. but we cap it. We stop re 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 we stop the registration at three hundred, so that's the maximum capacity. Mm. And um, and normally we have around one hundred people showing up for all the live sessions. One hundred in the morning, one hundred in the afternoon. Um, but because we deeply value in every live session to have smaller breakouts of around three, four or five people, um, there is that intimate circle sharing plus your own home circle and study group, um, which is really beneficial for those that enjoy the learnings in a more intimate setting. Great, thank you. Yes. I also want to speak to if somebody is is introverted like me like like actually like both of us Laura um and and kind of feeling like my god there's so many people in the space um what we're trying to do and and the intention with with how we show up on on the sessions is that we want to create intimacy in the space so even if there are lots of people there how we weave the sessions has a clear intention of us coming into our bodies, coming into our heart space um, and practicing showing up from, a, from a, a, a kind of true place inside of us where we don't have to feel like we have to be something that we're not to kind of fit in um, or yeah, just the sheer volume of people in a space can feel overwhelming if we're not used to that. Um, but we really try to put in 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 ways of being together in in the in the space that will enable us to feel safe and brave in showing up and sharing. Um, I should speak to the fact that we also co-create something called an agreement of trust. And it's something we'll speak a lot more about in the early part of the journey as well and cultivating the soil of our community so that no matter how many people we are, um, we, we can feel um, that sense of, yeah, safety and bravery in our bodies showing up. I hope that makes sense. Mm. That's very good. So Ladad, it, it's it seemed like you wanted to ask another question. Yes, no, I was wondering if we need to read, have read the book before the program. No, 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 or, no. Okay. And this journey is is goes beyond the book regenerative leadership that I wrote with Giles Hutchins. Um, there's some of the frameworks that we dive into on the journey, but it's um, yeah. It goes it goes beyond. But don't worry about whether you've read it or not. Um, some people start to reading during the journey because they find it a nice kind of combination to to this. But uh, it's not in any way an obligation. Where are you from, Soledad? I'm from Argentina. But I'm living right now in Spain. Okay, nice. Back there will definitely be a language. there will be a physical gathering in Spain organized by Cristina, Paco, and Anna. Cristina's actually from Argentina as well. There's quite a few from Argentina in our community. I haven't met her, but I know Paco from the CCA, the Climate nice. Coaching Alliance. So yeah. I think it was a, a trit that had some a noise coming through. I don't know. But yeah, I, I think that Paco is going to let me know when the meeting will be. I'll be glad to join. Yes. 
you will all of you that join the journey you will get um at the beginning of the journey you will get an overview of um, all the different kind of whatsapp group and local communities etc so you can join the ones that that you're interested um to join in We also have, um, especially in the first six months, we, Emily and I are prioritized to have what we call cafe sessions. I think last year we had maybe four or five. We will probably have the same amount of, of cafe sessions this year, which is just kind of informal, kind of like the vibe of our session now, where we're just kind of rocking up, seeing what's alive in the community which are quite a nice combination to the live session that has a, a, a theme and a focus and kind of um, different in, in vibe and energy where the cafe sessions are much more kind of what, what feels alive for you. And we sit with that. So that's another thing that I wanted to mention that is part of the journey. Yes. Anything else, any, any questions around our business model or uh, community? What, it, what excites me that I, that I feel like sharing is to see this as more that it's not, for me, it's not a course. Um, I, I'm, I'm passionate about sharing information and insight and cases about regenerative development of our societies. But what really lights me up is to see us as a as a growing, nourished organism, a movement that is activating regenerative change in our circles of influence, regardless of where we are. Um, for me, it's not leadership as in you need a leadership role in any way. It's about how you lead in in the world of today, um, in 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 a crisis influenced by multiple challenges. Um, how are we showing up and how are we joining forces from all walks of life, from all corners of this planet? How can we join forces, learn and grow together and together create this nourished organisms of, of regenerative change? That is what excites me. And that's why um, I have taken the, made the decision in 2024 to retreat from kind of the public uh, scene so I'm not giving keynotes I wrote a blog about that I can share that as well I wrote a blog about needing to retreat to kind of sense into the next chapter of this field but also to prioritize growing what is happening and the potential we have together um, in regenerators I'm excited about creating a business model around that and for our community of 22 and 23 journey travelers, where we start to invest in projects that emerge within our community and beyond. Um, so I think that's an important thing to share about me that I am, uh, I, I, I sometimes show up as a, um, as, as someone who, who knows a lot about regenerative leadership and business development and da, 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 talk to the corporate machine about the need for that transformation to happen. But what I'm really passionate about is much more the work of an activist. How do we join forces to create regenerative ripples? Um, but for me, it's important that we, um, that we both talk to the left brain hemisphere, the right brain hemisphere, um, that we build bridges and, and and nourish and activate change um, where we can using a language that is that is activating that change. But that's that's what's personally exciting to me. How do we how do we build a movement and how do we join forces with others in the field? Um, I don't know if any of you have heard about John Fullerton. He has a course and a community as well. He and I are, are great friends. So that's that's also part of how I work. How can we join forces instead of seeing each other as competitors? How do we nourish the field? Because time is of essence here. Um, yeah, I don't know if that made sense, but I felt like hearing that. Um, thank you. I would like to contribute to that one. 
Um, I'm really excited um, to join here. Um, I really look forward. Um, I'm in rehab, so to say. Um, last year, I did part of the course as well. Um, now I have more time and more patience to do it. Um, just getting back from a longer session within Spain, where I joined a farm that is doing the regenerative agriculture practices, just to learn what it is in practice, um, how I can learn from nature and how I can use the language to explain it to others. Mm -hmm. And I fully emerge with the, well, not, so, not really about the how question, um, because how we will get to you, that's absolutely sure. If your intention is there, the how will get to you. Mm -hmm. um, it is more about um, the patience to get there. That is for me the challenge and to understand uh, more about the principles of these regenerate, uh, regenerative practices within the companies that a, I come from, that's my background, um, and changing it to a more community-like activity, mm -hmm. like um, uh, you just explained. And I think it's wonderful. I think it's daring and appreciative. So thank you for that. And I really look forward to get started. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much. Yes, I'm excited about that too. Good. <laughs> I'm just gonna um, make sure I share those blocks that I have mentioned in the chat. I think you shared something important there, Laura, and also Andy, thank you so much. Um, this notion of an ongoing community. So this year is an expansive and activating and nurturing and all of the adjectives year <laughs> ahead. <clears throat> but after the year has come to a close, nobody is left on the station on their own, right? This is an ongoing community, a movement where we hold each other, we support each other, we champion each other. We, you know, we say, check in with you, Andy, how's it going? How's your patience today? What do you need from your community today? Right? We need each other. And this is something that you speak to all the time, Laura, that the time of the lone wolf has come to an end and we can only do this together. And I think the, 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 the part of the power of this, of stepping into the year long journey is that we properly become part of, kind of work ourselves from the edges and, 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 and into, <laughs> does that make sense? Like into the river, into the movement, and then we can just keep going. And there's something, relaxing if, if I tune into it energetically knowing that I will be held like there will always be somebody else in the movement that is going to step up that is going to say I've got your back um let's explore this together um we don't have to carry the weight of the world on our shoulders when we join together like this and we can feel a kind of sense of relief that next year, the year after, the year after, there will be these people showing up for me as well. Um, and I think that's quite unique. Mm -hmm. And thank you for that, Laura. I think so many of us have been craving that. <laughs> thank you so much for sharing that, Emily. I will share something now that you often share about, which is for wholeness to happen. Maybe th these are not your words, but... Emily often do do this. You have to maybe 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 I get it right wrong. <laughs> you can correct me, but you meet us halfway, um, so that we can meet you here, and in that way we can create wholeness, right? Yeah. Because for me, it's important to to stress that we we can't kind of force um, content or insight or community into you. You need to step step up and step in as well. You have to meet us halfway. 
So it's mm -hmm. not, not <clears throat> we're not serving you and kind of and blah, 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 petting you and fe feeding you on a silver platter. You, we we kind of require from you that you that you step up as well. That's part of the self leadership component. Hundred percent. I usually talk about it as a two hundred percent relationship where we rock up a hundred percent and you show up a hundred percent. And then it's like a really solid relationship to the community as well. And, and because you, I, I'm doing this movement, right? Because we can feel that in our spine, that that feels good. And sometimes showing up a hundred percent is saying, I feel a little lost today. Um, you know, where's my home circle buddies that can support me? Um, or I'm going to take a little break. I'll see you next month. That's okay too. But as long as that's coming from that place of, phew, I, I choose to leave, lead myself with that 200% relationship in mind. Does that make sense? We talk about it as right relationship, which we will yes. more as, as we as we journey along. Um, but that's the exciting part. And as Emily said, sometimes your 100% is, is kind of crawling to a life. Yeah. Not having yes. a camera on and just sitting and listening. With a, a blanket. Table. Yes. A question from Marin is, what happens after the year? How does the journey continue after the course? That's a really great question. So after the journey, 22, the first time I, I held space for a year-long journey where Emily participated as a, as a participant, um, I wanted to see what the what the journey community actually wanted. I'm a big believer in self-organization. I'm a big believer in not selling things as shiny products, but that but creating a space where people actually show up and start to do things differently. So I wanted to experiment with um, with whether there was interest in a self-organized community where I was not involved in any way, where they, people could still have access to, to the content, but that I stepped away as a facilitator. Um, and the community gathered a couple of times, but it didn't really kind of um, manifest into a community that, that, that met regularly. And there was um, a craving and interest, a longing for that. So this year, for the first time, um, we will experiment with offering something that we have worked on for the past year with the 22 community. And from the, from the, from the autumn, we started to involve the 23 journey travelers into what kind of community constellation are you excited about? So what right now we are in the process of hiring what we call a community pollinator, which is um, either one individual or maybe a team of two or three community pollinators from within our community that will be the stewards of the community network going forward. So they will be um, holding the space and being uh, responsible for organizing uh, sessions, inviting in exciting guest speakers um, and, and planning the thing. Because what, what we saw from last year was that we do need the masculine elements, um, and, and this is not a gender thing, this is just the masculine elements of we meet on these dates, this is the Zoom link, here we gather, this is the theme um, for the community to actually come together. So it's been an interesting learning process, and, um, and, and I'm excited about seeing what will unfold. So the community travelers or the journey travelers from 22 and 23 will in March be invited into an official alumni community where we have a couple of live sessions a month, but it will be much more a community constellation where the community decides what topics to dive deeper into. They will shape it depending on what is the interest within the within the community. So it's not a journey as as the as the first year is. Um, yes, and and that's what I was sharing about. Uh, what we are experimenting with is. Um, reinvesting revenue from that uh, membership-based model back into the community, investing into journey travelers, community members, new exciting projects or companies, etc., cetera, is, um, is part of the vision. I hope that answered your question, Marin. We have come to the end of the hour.
Any burning remaining questions? No, I found all the answers I was looking for. So thank you very much for this, this space. Thank you so much. The same from here. Thank you so much. Same, same. Thank you. And a beautiful hour. Yeah, it was nice to spend this hour with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Emily, do you have any <clears throat> anything that is burning within? Yeah, I'm just feeling quite moved, actually. I, I feel grateful for this hour as well and having the opportunity to just be with the energy of 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 this invitation um to to step onto this path um that is a life-changing transformational path um for the whole being um we hadn't prepared anything had we laura we just rocked up five minutes before and said it would be lovely to meet whoever's here and um i think every time there is an opportunity to talk about the energy and essence of this journey. There is a sense of aliveness and joy about the importance of it. So I hope you take with you a feeling that this is important and we all matter. You know, when we know that we matter, when we know that our actions, thoughts, feelings, being, how we be, how we do in the world matters that is when the shifts start to happen. And that is also an essential core part of this journey. So um, yeah, thank you very much for being here. And if you are jumping in, absolutely can't wait to, to travel with you shoulder to shoulder this year and beyond. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone. Thank you. See you, if not a wonderful new year. All the best to all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.